Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So this is my iPhone here. Now I've already made a video about some of the gaming that you can do on it, specifically when it comes to standalone games in Apple Arcade, as well as streaming your PC, home gaming consoles, and Stadia on the phone. So in today's video, we're doing the other side of that coin, and that's going to be retro game emulation. And as you probably already know, running emulation on an iPhone is not very easy. So in today's video, I'm going to highlight the Alt Store, which is a platform that allows you to sideload apps onto your device. And this is how we're going to get emulation going on the iPhone. Now you pair that with the Backbone controller, and all of a sudden you've got a pretty powerful retro emulation machine. You'll be able to play your favorite Nintendo and Game Boy and Super Nintendo games no problem. You can even run special emulators like this Genesis emulator here, which allows you to play your classic games in a widescreen ratio. You'll be able to play some of your favorite arcade games with no problem, and even take advantage of the touchscreen on your phone, which you can use as an input for Nintendo DS games. And you'll even be able to play some unexpected games like classic point-and-click adventures on the PC, Atari Jaguar, Panasonic 3DO, and even the Sega Saturn. And of course, you'll also be able to play your favorite Pokemon games too. So there's a few emulator options available to you, and in today's video I'm going to highlight some of my favorites here, and help you get started on your way to playing retro games on your iPhone. We got a lot of ground to cover, so without any further delay, let's jump into it. So like with all my videos, I'm going to have a written guide linked in the video description, which will walk you through this process. But the first place you want to go is the Alt Store website. And here, in the FAQ section, you're going to find installation instructions for both Windows and Mac. We're going to do Windows today, but the Mac version is actually easier than the Windows version. First thing you want to do is download and install iTunes and iCloud for your Windows machine. Now the catch here is that you cannot get them from the Microsoft Store, you have to download them directly from Apple. So let me walk you through how to do that real quick. You'll want to click on both of these links, which will take you to the respective sites. Here on this iTunes site, instead of doing the Get It From Microsoft button, scroll down until you find the Looking For Other Versions, and then you have the Windows version here. Download this one instead. It's a similar process on the iCloud page. Instead of clicking on this Microsoft Store link, you're going to want to download this one that says Windows 7 and Windows 8. And even though I'm using Windows 10 here, it's going to work just fine. When you try to download iCloud, it might give you an error here. Just go ahead and override that error. So now we have our iTunes and iCloud setup files. If you already have iTunes installed, go ahead and uninstall it first. Next, just run through the installation process for both iTunes and iCloud. There's nothing really special about this setup here. Just go through the prompts. Once you've installed iCloud, it's going to ask you to restart your PC. Go ahead and do that. Once you're back up, iCloud is going to ask you to sign in. This is going to be the same credentials that you already use on your iPhone's App Store. You're going to need it a couple more times after this as well. Okay, so once you have those installed, we're going to install the Alt Server. And this is available on the front page of the Alt Store website. So just click on the Windows installation file, download the file here, and then go ahead and extract this file. Within that, you're going to find a setup.exe file. You're going to want to launch that one. This is super quick, just go through the prompts here and install it onto your computer. Okay, once you're done installing it, go ahead and start up Alt Server. It's going to ask for your permissions here. Just go ahead and check everything and select Allow Access. Next, open up iTunes, agree to the license agreement, and here you are on the front page here. Go ahead and click on this Agree statement, and then plug in your iPhone. Two things are going to happen. On your computer, it's going to ask you, do you want to access your iPhone? Go ahead and hit Continue. And then when you plug your iPhone into the computer, the iPhone itself is going to give you a prompt too. It's going to ask you to trust this computer. Select Trust here, and then put in your passcode if you have one set up on your phone. At that point, you'll see your iPhone appear on your iTunes. Click on the phone icon here on the top, and then under this backup section, scroll down a little bit until you see sync with this phone over Wi-Fi. After that, hit apply and done, or done and apply, it's up to you. And you're all set up, you're ready to add alt store to your phone. In your menu bar here on the bottom right, you're going to find an alt server icon. Click on that, then select install alt store, and then select your phone. Here it's going to ask you to add that app store ID again. It'll take a second here, but then it'll install alt store on your phone. Let's check it out. So here's the app. 
but when you tap on it, it's going to say that it's an untrusted developer. And what it's actually doing is signing you in as the developer of this alt store app. So you need to give the phone permissions to open up the app. So open up your settings app, then go down to general and then scroll down to near the bottom here. You'll find one that says device management within here, select the developer app. And then right here has got a ton of my email address. So I'm blurring it out, but just go ahead and hit okay and authorize this app. After that, when you exit out, you should be able to open up the alt store. It's going to ask you for a couple permissions and then you're good to go. Now we're ready to start adding apps. Luckily, the developer of alt store also has made a pretty cool emulator as well. It's called Delta. So just tap on it here, add in your app store credentials one more time. And the first time you install an app, it's going to show you how alt store works. Basically what it's saying is you have to keep that alt server app running on your computer and make sure you have your phone connected to Wi-Fi. And this will allow you to install a limited number of apps onto your phone. And it'll also help you refresh your apps, which is a limitation that is placed onto your phone that you have to refresh these apps every seven days. But it's a very seamless process and I'll walk you through that at the end of this video. Either way, as long as you have alt server and iTunes running, you should be able to install this app here. It's going to take a second to download the app itself and then put it on your phone. And you can see there, now you have Delta as an app on your phone. Now, if you see at the bottom here, it says seven app IDs remaining. And that's because you're only allowed to install something like nine or 10 apps every week. And even then you're only allowed to have three of them active at any time. And one of them has to be alt store. And so you're running at pretty limited parameters here. You basically have to decide which two emulators you want to have running on your device at one time. Now you can deactivate them temporarily and then reactivate them as needed. But if you don't want to go through any of these limitations, you can actually pay to enroll in the Apple developer program. This costs a hundred dollars a year, but it'll give you no limitations on your apps. And you also don't need to refresh them every seven days. Personally, I don't think it's worth a hundred bucks a year just to be able to sideload my own apps. So within this video, we're going to keep it to the limitations that are set in place with a free account. Okay, instead of talking about limitations and all this other stuff, let's actually talk about the things you can do on the phone itself. So let's start up Delta and check it out. First thing you'll see is that you don't have any games. So let's add some games to your device first. There's two ways you can do it. The first is through file sharing. You open up iTunes, go to your phone, select file sharing, and then select the Delta app. And then you basically just drag and drop whatever games you want to play. Now currently Delta is limited to Nintendo games only, so you can play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, NES, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo 64. There are plans for expanding to Genesis and other systems, but for now, the only way to access those is by becoming a Patreon on his website here, which I'll leave linked in my written guide. So once you've added all the games you want this way, in Delta you just hit the plus sign and then select iTunes, and then it'll prompt you to import all of the games that you drug over using iTunes. That's one way of doing it. Now there's another way to do it as well. What you have to do for this one is to store all of your games on a cloud platform, something like the iCloud Drive, Google Drive, or Dropbox, they're all gonna work just fine. What you have to do is link up that account with your Delta account, and then you just grab all of those files from the cloud. I'm using my iCloud Drive right here, and as you can see, I'm just hitting the plus button, then the files, and then picking whatever game I wanna load onto Delta. This is a really great process if you only wanna add certain games at a time. Now, theoretically, it's supposed to download the artwork as well, but if it doesn't, just long press on the game, then select change artwork, and then games database. From there, search for your game and then find the artwork. And that's it. Anyway, just keep going this way. You hit the plus and then the files, and then you navigate to your games, and then you download the game, put it onto your phone. It seems a little bit cumbersome, but I'm telling you, after a few seconds, you're gonna get very used to it. For some reason, I've always had a hard time getting the artwork for Nintendo games, so I've had to manually install all of those myself. And this is what it'll look like once you have it set up. You just scroll through your games like this. Now, each of these systems has its own touchscreen controller, and they work okay. They have a little bit of haptic feedback to them, so they're not, like, terrible. But let's face it, you'd never want to play any of these games on touchscreen controls anyway. Luckily, this app integrates seamlessly with the Backbone controller. From here, just select your game and then it's going to start up immediately. The only system that gave me any sort of hiccups is the fact that Nintendo has the A and B buttons switched. So let me show you how to remap controls using the Delta app. You press the start button to return to the main menu, go into settings, then select the controller, and then select Customize Controls. Here, you just tap on the button you want to be mapped, and then you press the button you want to map it to. It's as simple as that. 
then just select save at the top here and now you're done and it'll save that across the entire system so now you're good to go now as a whole delta works really well all the systems that are on here are going to play flawlessly but it is very limited in options for example you cannot adjust anything having to do with the screen there's no shaders or colorization or aspect ratio, any of those things that you would expect from a more robust emulator. But at the same time, I really respect the simplicity of this app itself. If you really just want to get into these Nintendo games from your youth, this is the easiest solution by far. And like I said before, everything works flawlessly all the way up through Nintendo 64. Nintendo DS does require some specific configuration, but all of that can be found on the Alt Store's website. It's just a matter of loading certain BIOS onto the app itself. So let's try another emulator that can play multiple games, and let's go with the Big Daddy first. We're going to do RetroArch. Now for this one, we're actually going to have to sideload the app into the phone itself. So you're going to want to go to the RetroArch website, into the Downloads tab, and then download the iOS app. It's going to be an IPA file. So the easiest way to get this onto your phone is to move it over to one of those cloud services that I mentioned before. I'm just going to take this IPA and add it to my iCloud drive. But you could do the same process with Google Drive or Dropbox or any of those other services. Once it's up in the cloud, you're going to go back to the Alt Store app and then select the plus button and then navigate to wherever that IPA is and then select it. From there, it's going to take a few minutes to actually load onto the phone and then you'll see it appear here on the bottom. And just like that, we now have RetroArch on our phone. Now, just like any time that you first start up RetroArch on a new system, there's a bunch of configuration you have to do to tweak it to your settings. I'm going to show you the things I do when I first set it up. First, I'm going to go into settings, then drivers, and then menu drivers. And within here, I like to select XMB. And then back out to the main menu page, go to configuration file, and then save current configuration. Then close out a RetroArch, and then start it back up again. And now you have the cross media bar, which I like to show off in all my videos. So now let's load some games onto the device. We're going to use that same iTunes method I showed you earlier for Delta. You're going to select file sharing and RetroArch, and then pick whatever game systems you want to add to it, but then also make sure that you move all your BIOS files over using a folder that's named BIOS or system or whatever you want to name it. And I can't show you where to find these BIOS files because they're copyrighted, but just make sure you throw all your RetroArch BIOS files into that one folder. And on top of that, throw in all of your games and put them in their own respective folder. And later in this video, I'll show you all the games that you can play on this device. But first, let's set up the BIOS files because they're going to be very important for certain systems. In RetroArch, go to the Settings tab, then the Directory section, and then select the System slash BIOS folder, and then select this folder here, and then navigate to the BIOS folder and select Use this directory. Then go into the Configuration file and select Save Current Configuration. After that, you're good to go. Now your BIOS files are all loaded up. So let's make a playlist to show off your games. Go to the Playlist tab, then select Scan Directory, and from here, navigate to whatever system you want to load a playlist for. Let's do Nintendo 64 as our first example. Select the Nintendo 64 folder and then select Scan this directory. Now, in that main crossbar, you're going to see a Nintendo 64 playlist, and you can scroll through all of your games here. And on top of that, it's going to automatically download the box art as you navigate through, which is pretty cool. So let me show you the potential of what you could have when you have all of your playlists loaded. So as you can see here, I've just loaded up like all my favorite systems and then a smattering of games for each of these systems. And some of them download the box art, some of them don't. But either way, this is the potential you have. So let me get the first disappointment out of the way. I could not figure out how to get Nintendo 64 to run. Anytime I tried to run a game, it would just freeze up on me. And I could get into the quick menu, but I couldn't actually load the game itself. And I don't know what was going on here. If you're able to figure it out, let me know in the comments, because I'd love to amend my written guide. Regardless, let me show you some of the other systems available. NES is going to play just fine as expected. But the nice thing about RetroArch is you have more control over the system itself. So for example, if I go into the video settings here, I could turn on integer scaling or turn off integer scaling. I could even adjust the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 like some sort of monster, or just leave it at 4 by 3. It's really all going to be up to you. I really like having the ability to make these changes to the emulators themselves, because I think it allows you to get the most out of every single game as you're playing it. And sure, it's a bit of an advanced feature, but at the same time, I love having those options. Just like with Nintendo, Super Nintendo games are all going to run flawlessly. Even things like Star Fox are going to run at a solid 60 frames per second. And that makes sense because the processor on the iPhone is just super powerful. So I'm just going to show off a little bit of like 8-bit and 16-bit gameplay here, but just know that all of these are going to work fine. 
And if you load the widescreen core for Sega Genesis, you're going to be able to play these games in a wider screen. So here I am playing Echo the Dolphin in 16x9, which always just kind of delights me every time I see this. This is one of the few Sega Genesis games that I actually owned growing up, so it's really cool to see it in a new form like this. Now one of the nice things about using a Nintendo DS with RetroArch is that you can use the touchscreen controls in combination with the gameplay itself. And this was always one of the most annoying things that I found when I was playing DS games on a system that doesn't have a touchscreen. Not only that, you can actually render the games at a higher resolution. So I'm running a Nintendo DS at 3x resolution and it's running just fine. PS1 is going to play just great and there's something like 4 or 5 different cores that you can use for PlayStation. So no matter what, you're going to be able to play any of your PlayStation games flawlessly and some of them even upscaled. And probably one of the biggest surprises is how well arcade games played. Your typical games like Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 are going to play great. And you're going to find bugs here and there, for example, Virtua Fighter won't actually show the characters, so it's kind of not worth playing at all. But then look at this, full speed Killer Instinct using the MAME 2003 Plus core. I haven't seen the arcade version of Killer Instinct playing at full speed since back in the day in the arcades. And amazingly, same thing with Tekken Tag Tournament. It's probably been 25 years since I've actually seen this game in motion, and holy crap, it's super cool to see. Not that I actually ever liked this game, but it's still pretty cool. And this version of RetroArch has the Retro 8 core, which is a Pico 8 emulator. And just like that, you're playing games like the original Celeste on your iPhone. It's totally overkill, but still super fun. And unfortunately, a lot of these Pico 8 games are really buggy, but there's still some pretty cool potential here. RetroArch also has the Scum VM core, so you can play point and click adventure games like Curse of Monkey Island and so on and so forth. Now the Sega Saturn core that is on RetroArch isn't the best one here, but all the same, the iPhone is so powerful that you can play all these games at full speed anyway. Just bear in mind, this is one of those systems that does require BIOS to be installed, so make sure you grab the Saturn BIOS and add them to that BIOS folder like I showed you earlier in the video. And this was actually my first opportunity to play certain games at full speed for the first time in my life. For example, I was super pumped to play Way of the Warrior back in the day because I had read about it in a bunch of magazines, but I never actually got to play it because I've still never seen a 3DO in real life. And I can confirm after waiting 25 plus years to play this game that this game just sucks. And I had heard it sucked back in the day, but man, it aged even worse today. Regardless, if you want to play 3DO games from back in the day, you're going to be able to play them on the iPhone via RetroArch with no problem. And I had the same experience with Atari Jaguar. I remember hearing about Alien vs Predator back in the day and thinking, man, it would be so cool to be an alien. Or to run around and actually be a predator. And I finally got to do it here on my iPhone. And I can tell you that being a predator is super badass. You get to just punch Marines left and right. In all seriousness, it is still pretty cool to be able to play Atari Jaguar games and 3DO games and all these other systems that I never got to play. Because now, with an iPhone and a Backbone 1 controller, as well as a decent emulator, I finally have a device that's powerful enough to play through these games. So what else can we do on an iPhone? Let's check out some other emulators. Now there's a specific version of Dolphin for iOS, but unfortunately it only works on iOS 14.4 and below. And unfortunately my phone is actually beyond 14.4, so I'm not able to test this out. But if you are running an older version of iOS, this is going to be an option available for you. But on the bright side, one of the systems you can play regardless of iOS version is PSP. For this, just go directly to the PSP website and then download the latest IPA for iOS. You're going to see other options, for example, a DEB file, but that's only for jailbroken phones. Installing this emulator is just like with RetroArch. You're going to drag it over to your cloud service of choice. And then we're going to head back to the alt store. And we've run into a bottleneck here because we can only have three active apps at one time. What you want to do is long press one of these apps and then select deactivate. And once it's inactive, you can go ahead and hit the plus button and then add your new emulator. And this is the exact same process we did for RetroArch. And there we go. Now we have the PSP emulator. Adding games to this is the exact same process. Just select it in iTunes and then move your games over. Just be sure to make sure you have enough free space on your iPhone as you're moving things over. And I have to say, emulating PSP on an iPhone is just incredible. For example, here I'm playing Ridge Racer with 4x resolution with zero frame skip, and it's running smooth as butter. Now granted, some other games are not going to run as well. They may have some visual artifacts. For example, OutRun 2006 is going to look like crap even if you use OpenGL or the Vulkan backends. So this might not be a game that you're going to want to play. But for the most part, all the other games are going to work fine. 
And even the God of War games work, but you have to turn it down to a 3x resolution and then also turn on auto frame skip. But even then, it still looks nice and it is a relatively smooth experience. Okay, let's talk about one final emulator option here, and this one's called Provenance. And like Delta and RetroArch, this one can play multiple systems. And I'll leave links to where to find this, but you want to download and install the most recent official pre-build IPA. And as of making this video, it's version 1.5b2774, and it's been the same file for about a year now at this point. And we're going to install this the same way we installed the PSP and the RetroArch emulators. You're just going to drag it over to your cloud service, wait for it to upload into the cloud, then jump into the Alt Store app. We're going to deactivate one emulator. And then press the plus button, select provenance, and then allow that to install. Installing provenance is going to warn you about app extensions, and it's going to sound super scary, but don't worry about it, just select keep app extensions. That was a limitation that was fixed in Alt Store a while back. Okay, so once you've got it installed, let's check out Providence. Now I played around with this app years ago on my iPad, so I'm pretty familiar with it. There's two different ways you can load up your games. The first is through cloud and local files, and this one is going to allow you to browse through your cloud files and then install them directly onto your device. And this is basically the same way that we installed everything via Delta. But I actually prefer the other way, which is called a web server. So once you select that and then hit OK, it's going to give you an IP address. And then on your computer, you're just going to want to type in that IP address on your web browser. And just like that, you have access to a file sharing service that'll communicate directly with the Providence app. To add games, all you have to do is open up the imports folder and then drag in your individual games right here. And it's already going to know where to put them afterwards. As you can see here, I loaded up some Game Boy Advance games. And now when I go back into that main folder, I can see a Game Boy Advance folder. So in a nutshell, this is how you add your games and your BIOS files. You just drag them into this imports folder. Now this one will also automatically download box art, but if it doesn't, it's not quite as easy to add it. As you can see when you long press here, you have the ability to choose a cover, but you're going to have to have it within your photos or in your cloud storage. So you have to download all the box art first and then select it. And that's kind of a pain, unfortunately. Either way, when you select a game here, it's going to ask you which core you want to use if it has multiple cores, and then it'll boot it right up. This one also has touchscreen controls, or for the most part, it's going to work with the Backbone 1 controller. And this kind of behaves a lot like Delta in the fact that you don't have a lot of options when it comes to emulation here. You're not going to have the full breadth of things that you have available within RetroArch. And there's some little things that really kind of bother me. For example, when you quit out a game, you have to rotate the device every single time, and then you got to rotate it back in order to be able to see everything. These things just kind of get annoying over time. But once you have everything loaded, this is what it's going to look like. And this is a pretty clean interface, but like I mentioned before, it's kind of a pain to add your own box art. And unfortunately, this app is still a little bit buggy. For example, Atari Jaguar is broken. It's going to crash any time you open up a game. But you are going to have access to other systems that aren't available on Delta. For example, TurboGrafx CD works just fine. And of course, any of the Nintendo games are going to play great as well. But as I mentioned before, you are going to be limited in your emulator options. In a sense, this works a lot like Delta, where everything works plug and play. But unfortunately, I'm the kind of guy that likes to have more control over my emulation. And so for that reason, I prefer RetroArch. And unfortunately, some games just don't work at all. For example, Star Fox wouldn't load no matter what core I used. Now that being said, one of the neat things about Providence is that the team is actually really helpful in showing you how to build your own app from source. So if you run Mac OS and you're interested in getting into game development, this would be a really neat starter project to be able to build your own version of Providence, which has the most improved emulation right now, and it's going to work a lot better than the pre-built IPA that I'm showing right here. So if you're looking for a weekend coding project, this might be a lot of fun for you. Regardless, we're going to keep it simple here in this video and only focus on the pre-built IPA. And unfortunately, even though Sega Saturn runs really well, none of the buttons seem to register with the console itself. So you can't actually play any of these games, you can only look at the title screens, which is kind of annoying. So let me run you through real quick what's available on each of these emulators that contain multiple systems. Let's start with Delta since it's the simplest and easiest to install. Delta is going to play any of the Nintendo systems all the way up through Nintendo 64, and you can also have a beta version access to Sega Genesis if you sign up as a Patreon. Providence has all the same systems that are available on Delta, minus the Nintendo DS, plus a bunch more. And unfortunately, even though it says it can run Jaguar, it actually can't. And with Sega Saturn, you're not going to be able to use the Backbone 1 controller. And then RetroArch is the granddaddy of them all. It can play all those systems and then some, including very obscure systems, as well as almost all of the arcade cores that you can think of. The only drawback with RetroArch is that I couldn't get Nintendo 64 working. But if anyone's able to figure it out, please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to add it to my written guide. 
Okay, so this video is getting super long, so let me give you one last tip here before we close out. Let me show you how to refresh your games. It's as simple as just selecting the Refresh All button on the Alt Store app, and you have to do this once every seven days. But the cool thing is, the more often you do it, the more likely it is that the iPhone will just do it in the background for you. And so after a couple weeks, it's just gonna do it itself. And at that point, you're gonna be able to play any of your side-loaded apps at any given time, bearing in mind that you're limited to just having three apps active at any one time. Okay, so now that we're done with the guide and the showcase version of this video, how do I actually feel about gaming on an iPhone? I've now dedicated two long videos to the whole concept. And in general, after doing this deep dive and seeing all the possibilities available for the iPhone, I walked away pretty impressed at all of the things that are available. And sure, things like emulation do take a few extra steps to get going, but I'm telling you, I was so impressed with how well RetroArch ran on the iPhone. I think that if RetroArch had specific cores available on iOS, for example, Flycast for Dreamcast, Dolphin for GameCube, and also the PSP core, this would be a one-stop shop, especially if we can figure out how to get Nintendo 64 working. And there's quite a bit of hoops to jump through in order to get this all running, but at the end of the day, it is pretty cool to say, hey, after 15 minutes of work or so, I too can emulate any system on my iPhone once I have it set up. And I never really thought of this as a possibility until I got the Backbone 1 controller. Now that being said, this was a lot of work to get all set up compared to a dedicated retro handheld device like the RGB 10 Max, or the RG351V. In nine times out of 10, I'm still gonna reach for those dedicated handheld systems when I wanna play a classic game. But there's something to be said about being able to emulate these games on the device that's already gonna be in your pocket 24 seven anyway. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something here. I know I learned a lot of things along the way, and hopefully this gives you pause to consider the gaming properties of an iPhone if you happen to own one. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.